Hey everybody and welcome back to Algebra 2 Online. So today marks the first day of a very important unit in Algebra 2, um, the one where we get to talk about quadratics a lot more. So um, you learn about these in Algebra 1, but we've got way more to say about them and I honestly um, feel like they're one of the most important things you learn from Algebra 1. And uh, you'll see that actually the unit that follows this builds on what we learn here um, really like 100%. So you want to make sure you understand these things really well um, because everything kind of moving forward for a while is really directly connected to this. So the first thing I want to talk about is one, when we set a quadratic equal to zero and solve, like what are we actually doing? So this is something that you do a lot in Algebra 1. You know, you'll do like all these problems where it's like 2x squared plus 4 equals 0, and then you solve. Um, it looks like a 6, but... Um, but really what we're doing is uh, we are finding the roots or the x-intercepts or the zeros. They all mean the same thing of um, the quadratic. And a picture helps here. Um, so there's actually three cases, and the first case is, um, you know, we'll, we'll say it's this one. You can have a quadratic that has two different roots, two different x-intercepts or zeros. Um, but really when we just set something, you know, equal to zero like this, the zero right here, this zero, is like this, y equals zero. And so we're just seeing, you know, it's just like a system of equations. When does, um, you know, the system, uh, 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 let me erase that. <laughs> what is like the common intersection of y equals zero and y equals two x squared plus four? Um, that's all we're doing. We're just solving a system of equations, um, one where it's y equals zero and one where it's two x squared plus four there. Um, so you could have, a case like this, and you would get um, two different values, two different solutions. You could have a case like this, and all these also could be drawn, um, like I could, let me erase that, I could have also drawn it upside down, like that's still a quadratic, um, where it has just this one intersection, and then you only have, you have basically what we call one repeated root. So you can get things like um, a quadratic that has factors like x minus 2 and then x minus 2 again. Um, and actually, I could make this one look exactly like this. So if I graph y equals negative x minus 2 times x minus 2, it would basically look something like what I drew there. Um, and here the only solution is 2. Um, we just get it two times. So that's one repeated root. And then in the last case, um, this one, you know, I could, again, do a, I'll just do one up here. Um, so you could have no intersection on this line. And hopefully your Algebra 1 teacher didn't say this, but it's not um, actually correct to say that there's no solution. Really what you should say is that there's no real solution. So something that we're going to talk about really soon is um, something called, um, there are a whole bunch of numbers out there that you don't know about yet, and they're the numbers that are basically solutions to these quadratics. Um, the numbers are called imaginary numbers, and it sounds like they're fake and not real, but the idea is actually they're not real like the way that we named most of those numbers being real numbers. They're the opposite kind of of these numbers, so we gave them the word imaginary, which represents sort of the opposite of, you know, the numbers that you're used to, like on the number line right here. Um, so there actually still is answers to this problem right here. Um, there's going to be two, and um, you're going to actually get two different roots, so it's not going to be like a repeated root case. Um, but we'll talk about that some more later on. But this is what we're doing. And this, this is really important to like know when we solve quadratics that we're actually just solving a system of equations. 
uh, one equation is y equals zero and the other is like the quadratic. And then we're just looking for, you know, these intersection points. Um, yeah. So today I just want to talk about how to graph these because really like if the whole problem goes back to graphing, then it's good to know how to graph them. So uh, there are three different uh, ways that we write um, quadratics. Uh, there's standard form, vertex form, and factored form. So I'm actually going to write them out, and then I'll just talk about them here. All right, so these are the three um, different uh, ways we write quadratics. You're probably used to this one, but it actually ends up being like the least useful one, which always frustrates me that like a lot of textbooks like to use this one. Um, this is by far the easiest one to graph because it's literally just function transformations. Like here you, um, you know, the inside is like your left right shift. And if you add a number, remember it's gonna go left. And if you subtract a number, it's gonna go right. Um, and then this is the shift up and down. And this is like your stretch factor. Um, so this factored form, um, and I'm gonna graph from all these so you'll see how we do it. But um, factored form, you're, you basically have it in kind of like this form and they don't necessarily have to be the same number. They can be like, you know, X plus two here and X minus three. And then again, you could have like a stretch factor in the front here. Um, this A is actually specifically the same A every time. It's not like, I use that, um, you know, and it has nothing to do with the fact that it's the same letter. Like if this, if these, you can write a quadratic and standard and vertex and factored. And when you do that, this A would always be the same. So if it was like a two X squared, blah, 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 quadratic, you'll still have a two and you'll still have a two. Um, so we're gonna basically just show you today how to graph all three of these. Um, and you should be able to do them without a calculator. Um, and I want to talk about this to kind of motivate this idea. So if you're graphing a line, you can always just graph it by picking two random points, plugging them in and connect the dots, right? Um, you could just take like, you know, a point and a point, and then you just connect the dots with little arrows. And that would always give you a line. You don't need to do like three or four or five points or whatever to get a line. But if you're doing a quadratic, whoops. If you're doing a quadratic, that doesn't work. So if you have two points, say like those two, like you plug them into the equation, like maybe it's a standard form or something, and you get, you plug in an input, you get an output, you get these two points. You can't just like connect them with a curve because you actually need another point. Um, the idea is like, you know, the graph could look like, like you could have a quadratic that's doing that you could have a quadratic that's doing that. Like it's like really big and like over here. Um, you could have a quadratic that, oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe it turns right here and then goes like that. Um, there's all sorts of options, right? Um, there's literally infinitely many quadratics that go through those points. I mean, you could have another one that's like, um, just like super steep, goes off the page, comes back down, it's like really skinny or something. Um, so it's not okay to just plot two points and connect the dots. You really need three. And specifically, you need um, a vertex point. So like take this, the orange one, you could plot this and you could plot this, but you need to know the turning point up here and if you know that, then you could figure out how steep it needs to be. Um, that's true for any quadratic. If you have a vertex and one other point, and uh, like either side of the vertex, so you don't want like just a vertex and two points on the left or something. But if you have a point on either side, then you should be able to connect it with a nice curve. So there's actually a pattern here. Um, if you have like a line, which is like, you know, x to the first power, then you need two points. If you have a quadratic, which is x to the second power, then you need three points. And if you have a cubic, let's say, which is x to the third, you would need four points. And this like just keeps going and going and going. But 
we're not going to worry about these ones yet. Um, that's like our next unit, basically. So you need three points to graph these. All right, so graphing standard form is actually probably the um, most tedious one, um, and it just has the most work to it. So you first have to get the line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry is this, uh, like the formula is negative b over 2a, and in this problem, negative b over 2a, you know, b is negative 8, a is negative 2. So if you plug it in, you would get um, negative 2. Um, and really, the negative b over 2a comes out of the quadratic formula down here. So negative b over 2a is this line of symmetry. And the quadratic formula, I'll just write it down here, it equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared by 4ac all over 2a. Um, and what this little picture is trying to show you, the plus or minus part right here, so we can either um, minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a and land there, or we can add square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a and get there. Um, but you have to do it from negative b over 2a, um, and that, that means it's the line of symmetry. So it's basically like I'm splitting the fraction up into these two parts. Um, so the idea is like from this middle line, I either add this thing and I get a root, or I subtract this thing and I get this other root. Um, so, yeah, um, this is this C here is here, here just because for standard form, the one thing you know quickly from the equation is actually the y-intercept. Because if you plug in 0 here and here, um, you'll kill those two terms and you can just get C. Uh, so like the y-intercept of this is negative 5, um, which I'm actually going to use here in a second. Um, all right, so we know the line of symmetry is negative 2. So that just means, you know, my graph is symmetric with that. So I'm going to plot the vertex, and you're always, always going to need the vertex. So um, if I plot the vertex, I have the x, I just need the y. So you just literally plug it in. And if you simplify all that, you'll get... Three. So that means that at negative two, I should be up here at three. Okay. And then um, that is like one of, you know, those points that you definitely need. You like, it just goes back to this idea. Like you need the vertex. And now I really have choice for the other two points. But the idea is like pick something that's easy um, on one side of the line of symmetry, and then just use symmetry to plot the third and final point. So um, the, the way to do this, I would just plug in 0 up here for x, and you kill those first two terms. And that means that if you plug in 0 for x, then you're on the y-axis here, right? And that's why this c from the standard form is actually always the y-intercept. So I'm going to plug... Uh, I'm going to plot negative 5 over here. And then I just use symmetry. You know, I, I would just um, kind of reflect it over here at this point. And now I have um, my curve. So let me get rid of this part. I don't need that. Um, but that's it. So you find the line of symmetry using negative b over 2a. And then you plot the vertex. And so you just plug that point in. Whoops, I just realized I didn't write it there. So negative 8 times negative 2. There we go. Um, and then you, you get your vertex point, and then you just pick an easy point um, on one side of the vertex, which is typically like the y-intercept. If the y-intercept isn't easy to plot, you can just always plug in like 1 or something simple and easy to just get another point, and then you just flip it over, and you get the third one for free. So that's standard form, and that's actually like the hardest one, I think. Um, this is vertex form, and this one's probably the easiest, especially after function transformation. So the first thing I would do is just plot the vertex using transformation. So you have a plus 3, which means we're going to go left 3, 
and then minus one, so we're gonna go down one. So my vertex would be at negative three, um, negative one, which is right there. That's just done with function transformations. Then you plot an easy point. So easy point is like anything, um, you know, that you th would give you the least amount of work. Like typically, a lot of times that is just plugging in like a three or zero to the equation. So if I plug in zero, right, I'm basically finding a y-intercept right here. Um, so if I simplify this, um, you would actually get one half times nine minus one. Whoops, why did I write eight? Minus one, which is 3.5. So then the y-intercept is right there. And you know that like this is the line of symmetry because that's the vertex. So you can just flip over again and you can plot the um, you know, third and final point using symmetry. So this is roughly what that quadratic looks like. And that's literally it for vertex form. So you, you basically should get the vertex for free in a sense because you, ha you can just see it from the equation. Then you can just pick an easy point, like a lot of times, you know, the z easy points are like zero here, but you could also have tried like, you know, if you plug in um, like negative three, no, uh, negative four, let's say is pretty easy. Uh, I was about to say negative three, but we already plotted that. Um, like if the reason negative four is easy is because this part, right, simplifies to negative one, and that's easy to square. So you can get uh, positive one, so times a half is a half, minus one equals negative a half. Like, so, you know, we can just check it. Negative four, negative a half, that looks about right. Um, but you just pick something here that's easy, and you just plug it in. So the last one, factored form, um, also pretty easy. Um, you don't have to do too much work here. Basically, um, you actually get two points for free because you have the factors. And the factors are basically just like the, um, you know, the, they're going to help you figure out the roots or the zeros. So if you plug in, um, you know, if you just look and you try to think about what would give you zero here, you can see it would be one, right? One minus one is zero. And here it would be negative three. So that means that one of my roots is one and the other one is negative three. And so those are two of my three points I needed just using like what I know about factors and roots. So you can usually just write the opposite of the numbers you see in here on the, the x or x axis and you'll get two points. Then um, you basically need to use symmetry to find and plot the vertex. So you know that like right now, um, this is negative three and this is one. So this is one, two, three, four units apart. So you know that the line of symmetry would be like um, at negative one, which is one, two units from either side, right? So we know negative one is the line of symmetry. So if we are using symmetry to find and plot the vertex, we just use x equals negative a half, nope, sorry, negative one um, in the equation to get the um, y, -ax, y value of the vertex. So if we plug that in, and then I'm just gonna simplify all this. So it looks like we're getting two. So then at negative one, we're up here at two and we just connect it with a little curve um, and that's it um, so you know the benefits of the different forms so if you're in factored form you basically already know the roots or the zeros or the x-intercepts um, it's really just the opposites of these numbers in the factors right so if you have negative one we plotted one if you had three you plot a negative three. Um, that's kind of the stuff you can get nice and quick here. With vertex form, they call it vertex form because you know the vertex. Like 
these two numbers using function transformations tell me the vertex. And then you have to do work to get the other ones. Um, this one really isn't that useful. Like a lot of times people learn this one first and it drives me crazy. Like the only thing that's useful is that negative five here would have to be the y-intercept because it's where, you know, what I was talking about here with the orange stuff, like um, these terms would have to go away when you plug in zero for x along that, that y-axis. Um, but sometimes the y-intercept might be really, really large or small or something, and you don't even want to plot it. Like you might want to plot a point closer to the vertex so it's not so far away. Um, so this one is actually probably the least useful and honestly has like the most work. Um, but you do technically know the y-intercept quickly in this. Um, in this one, you know the vertex. And I already wrote it here. Whoops. And then this one, you know the roots and the zeros and all that. So that's about it. Um, so the homework today is just going to be graphing um, these different forms and getting kind of used to using those tricks.